你本来是哪里来的？家乡的？我觉得啊，香香港，香港，香港 ，OK。你你相当广大的。嗯。OK， sir， 呃、uh, ，Welcome everyone， welcome to 呃、uh, Harvard University CMSA Center of Mathematical Science and Application Quantum Matter Seminar Series. Uh, today we are very honored to have a、uh, uh, Hodan. Last name is actually pronounced as Lin. Is that correct? Oh yes, yes. In Mandarin, it's Lin. Yes. Okay, and,、uh, okay. And this Cantonese is Lin. I don't know how exactly, but、uh, Lin Hodan, Hodan Lin,、uh, from Princeton University, and he'll be telling us a story about discrete zeta angle symmetry and anomalies.、Uh, and Hodan is originally. Uh, grew up in Hong Kong and then moved to、uh, Princeton University,、uh, working under the guidance of、uh, Professor Nati Seberg. And、uh, before that, I think he was at the Perumal Institute. All right, so let's welcome Hao Da.、Um, you can see his share screen. Okay. Uh, let me. Oh, uh, I think you need to stop sharing first. Uh, yeah. You can go ahead. It's, it's、oh, okay. Okay. Let me set up one of them. Look. Uh. Can 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 you see the slides? Yes. Okay, so let me go to the screen. Okay. Uh. So uh. Can can you see the full screen slides? Yes. Okay. Great. Good. Okay. So uh. Th uh. Thank you for the introduction. Uh. And uh. To get today, I'm going to talk about the work I did with uh. Portion. On discrete theta angles, symmetries, and anomalies.、Uh, so this is based on this paper we put up on archive、uh, in July.、Uh, and, and let me say that if there's any questions, feel free to interrupt me. And、uh, any all com any comments are also welcome. So、uh, what is、uh, the questions we're trying to answer、uh, with this piece of work? So we know that given a quantum field theory with a non-anomalous global symmetry, we can construct new quantum field theories. By gauging the global symmetry, but often the case there are inequivalent ways to do the gauging, and the classic example is probably a two-dimensional CFT. So if we start with a two-dimensional CFT with some discrete symmetry, we can do a discrete orbifold. But often the case we can、uh, choose different discrete torsions, and as a result, it will lead to different、uh, CFTs. And the CFTs, uh, uh, they they form a family of theories, and we can label them. By theta angle, and often the case there are different theta angles、uh, have operator spectrum different. To present examples where theory was angles only differ by line operator spectrum. So what is this talk about?、Uh, this talk、uh, I'm trying to address two questions. So the first one is that how can we relate theories with different theta angles and And the second answer is that、uh, what is the、uh, general relations, the symmetries of these theories? Anything we can say about its total anomalies? Okay, so let me say a few words about symmetries in general. With the global symmetry, G. So it's often useful to couple the symmetry to a background gauge field. And when a symmetry G is with ordinary gauge field, oh sorry, I, I think people has trouble to to hear me. Oh,、uh, Ju Juven, can 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 you hear me? Uh, no, yes, but earlier there's some on and off. I think、oh. that. There are slides. It's okay. <laughs> okay.、Um, should, should I go back or, or um? And maybe you can restart this slide and help people. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I I can start over again. So. No, no. That 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 slide is fine. I think. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. So um, right. So 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 I'm going to、uh, let me discuss something about global symmetries in general. So if we start with a quantum field theory T, uh, uh, what G? Then we can couple the symmetry to a background gauge field A. So it's on the ordinary continuous zero-form symmetry, 
then the corresponding background gauge field A is a standard one form gauge field. And we can couple the current of the zero form symmetry to the background gauge field A, adding to the action, the following terms. But generalized symmetries are high form symmetries. Hold on. Which, yeah. I think uh, there's a possibility that uh, maybe the Wi Fi can maybe on and off. But maybe let me suggest, I think people remember your handsome face now, so you can turn off your video oh. <laughs> and then my health. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, can, 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 can you hear me now? Still, yes, no problem. Okay, so, so let me go back to full screen. Okay, so, so um, we know that there are uh, generalized symmetries and general asymmetries are higher form symmetries which act on extended operators. So for example, we can consider a Q-form global symmetry. A Q-form global symmetry acts on an operator that's supported on the extended sub-manifold of dimension Q. And the corresponding background gauge field for a symmetry is a Q plus one form uh, gauge field. And again, we can couple the current to, to a background gauge field by adding to the action the following terms. But uh, often the, case, the symmetry we want to discuss are not just continuous symmetry, but discrete symmetries. Then in that case, uh, A will be a discrete gauge field. And mathematically, it is described by the After we couple the theory uh, to a background gauge field, we can see partition function. Partition function is gauge invariant under the background gauge transformations or not. So there are two possibilities in general. In the first case, uh, the partition function is indeed gauge invariant and possibly up to adding some topological function, uh, sorry, some local functional of the background gauge field A. And in this case, uh, we can then uh, promote the background gauge field A to a dynamical gauge field and construct new quantum field theories by gauging the global symmetry. But in the second case, uh, uh, it's, it's also interesting. The partition functions is not gauge invariant under the background gauge transformations. Then in this case, the symmetry has an atoll phenomenon. So atoll phenomenon doesn't mean that the symmetry is uh, inconsistent. It only means that there's an obstruction to promote a global symmetry, to so gauge symmetry. So what's nice about atoll phenomenon is that uh, it is invariant under renormalization group flow. So once we computed this in um, UV theory, we can use it to constrain the infrared dynamics. Okay. So now um, uh, we can, call the, the, now I'll be focusing on the first case where the partition function is gauge invariant. Then we can gauge global symmetry. So gauging a global symmetry amounts to summing over all possible configurations of the background gauge field. And as a consequence, the gauge field becomes dynamical. So often the case, the space of uh, those might be divided into different topological sectors. And in such cases, we have the freedom to assign different weights to different topological sector. So this will means that we, in the path integral, will insert HA, which is a local functional of the gauge field A. And I will be focusing on the case where HA is an invertible field theory and different choice of HAs. So we can have uh, distinct uh, theories after gauging and they will, form, they will be forming a theory of a family of theories labeled by theta angles. So what are the possible theta angles uh, one can consider? So the most familiar one is probably a, a two pi periodic theta angle. So as an example, we can consider a U1 gauge field uh, at four dimensions. Then in this case, the U1 gauge bundle um, in four dimensions are divided in, into different topological sectors and they are characterized by their second two number. And uh, then we can add to the actions the following weights with the coefficient theta. And we know that a second true number is always an integer. So theta equals to zero and theta equals to five. So hence we have a two pi periodic theta angle. So uh, there's also other possibilities. For example, we can have a discrete theta angles. So this occurs if we are gauging a discrete global symmetry. 
So uh, if we gauge a discrete global symmetry, the H8 is a local functional of uh, A, and uh, it is nothing but, uh, but, a, but a theory that describes an SPT phase with a symmetry G. So we know that SPT phases uh, of a symmetry G form an abelian group. So accordingly, we can label the resulting gauge theory by T mod G with a subscript T. So in the rest of the talk, I will be focusing only on the second scenario where we gauge a discrete abelian symmetry. And as a result, I'll have discrete theta angle. And the symmetry that I'll consider are, for example, uh, ZK symmetries. So let me summarize the setup. Then we can gauge uh, the global symmetry G. Then we can gauge uh, the global symmetry and construct a new quantum field theories uh, uh, through a standard gauging. So, uh, so, so here, uh, the theory we obtained uh, T mod of Oh, sorry. I think Subir has a question. Oh, I can wait till the end of the slide. Go on, finish the slide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So, so, so then we can gauge the symmetry uh, by doing a standard gauging to obtain the theory T mod G with a subscript zero. Uh, but in another case is that we can add to the theory an asymmetry protected topological phase of the symmetry G and then gauge uh, the global symmetry. And as a result, we'll obtain a different theory and labeled by uh, the discrete theta angles P. Yeah, so, so is there any questions? Um, yeah, so I, I'm confused perhaps in the previous slide too. I mean, what guarantees if you take an arbitrary theory T and just gauge a symmetry that uh, the resulting phase is, is uh, trivial in the bulk? I mean, it couldn't also be a topological phase of some type? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so here I'm to HA. So HA is a, is a term that I inserted here. So here, A, A is not dynamical. So when I say it's an SPD phase, A is not dynamical. So, oh, so the H of A itself describes the is SPD phase. Not the yeah, that's theory. right. That's is, that what it, is that what that sentence right. means? Yeah. yeah. So H of A is a partition function yeah, that's of right, an that's SPD right. phase. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think there's other questions. Hey, so uh, I have a question about this uh, gauge. I mean, maybe you'll get to it later. So is it obvious that gauging with SPT always leads to a different phase? Uh, it could lead to the same theory, right? Right, it's possible that it leads to the same theory. Yeah, it is possible. Uh, um, yes, that, that's possible. So, uh, but I will not discuss such examples in the theories, okay. but, but you're right, that's possible. All right, thank you. I would like to, I would like to discuss. So here we we understand two of the errors, but but then uh, in the general questions we would like to ask is that if we start with one of the theories, how can we get to the other theories? And that means that we have to fill up uh, this, uh, we have to find out how, to, what should we be doing? What, what should we do to follow these directions? So the idea is to use dual symmetries. So what is the dual symmetry? If we start with the symmetry G with an abelian Q form symmetry, then the corresponding gauge theory will have a dual D minus Q minus two form symmetry. So here D denotes the space time symmetry. No, sorry. The, Contracting new group, and so we do not that by group from the from G to U one. So, as an example, we can consider uh, the the symmetry we saw was is a ZN two form symmetry. The symmetry the dual symmetry we obtained is a D minus Q minus two form symmetry, uh, which is also a ZN symmetry. So now. Um, Oh, yeah. I think uh, there are some uh, break, internet break for several times on this line. So perhaps 
can you take a moment to double check you are connect to the Wi-Fi you prefer to connect? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, maybe just make sure that everything is set up probably so. Maybe I close the door so it blocks. Um, uh, can, uh, can, can you hear me now? And then the next, can you possibly repeat it? Because basically, at least like, when you say it's basically not the, it's, it's oh. just. Oh, okay, sure. So I, I'll start over, I'll start over. Okay, so, so, um, so the, sorry, yeah. So, so let's go back to this diagram. And we would like to uh, understand how, what should we be, what should we do to, uh, to go from one theory to other theories. So the key point is that we need to use the dual symmetry. So if we start with uh, a global symmetry G, which is a abundant Q form symmetry, then the, re the theory after gauging will have a dual D minus Q minus two form symmetry. Here D denotes the space time dimension and this symmetry is based on the Pontryagin dual group, which is a morphism from G to U1. So the simplest example one can consider is the case where G is a Zn Q form symmetry. Then after gauging, uh, the dual group is also Zn. So we will obtain the D minus Q minus two form symmetry, which based on a Zn group. So one way to understand symmetries and dual symmetry is to think about how we couple the gauge theory to the dual symmetry, the background gauge field for dual symmetry. So here, here, let me explain the notation. So small a is the background gauge, uh, sorry, small a is the dynamical gauge field for the for geometry. And it, it, it is a Q plus one form. Oh, sorry, it, it is a, a co-cycle of plus one. And hat a is uh, the background gauge field for hat G symmetry. And it is a degree D minus Q minus two. So here the cup product uh, is uh, similar to wedge product for differential forms, but uh, it takes uh, two cosines and create a cosine of higher degrees. So in total, this object has degree D, which can be integrated over the whole space time. So here we see that uh, start with the Q form symmetry, it has to end up with a D minus Q minus two form symmetry in order to have this coupling. So now with the dual symmetry, we can simply recover the original theory uh, by gauging the dual symmetry. So how does it work? The idea is as follows. So if we gauge the uh, head G symmetry, we'll have to sum over uh, head eight. And by summing over head eight, it will localize the path integral to the locus where small a equals to zero, the path integral for the theory. Uh, for, for, for theory T. So here we understand how to go back uh, from, from any of the theories um, after gauging to recover the original theory. And we can use it to, 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 to go between two different theories with different discrete theta angle. So the idea is to uh, use dual symmetry and then we have to couple this TQLT These are not arbitrary TQFTs. They are the TQFTs by gauging the SPT phases. So now here, uh, we will just simply gauge the SPT phases. So A now becomes a dynamical gauge field. And this is really a TQFT, not an SPT phases. And this TQFT uh, will ca carry a label sub, uh, with a subscript P, which tells us which ET we started with. And this TQFT has, also has a dual symmetry. Uh, we will denote this background gauge field by hat A, coupled as, as before. So now with this QFTs, we can go between two different theories with discrete, uh, different discrete theta angles. So the idea is, uh, is, uh, is as follows. Let's first consider the partition functions of the theory T mod G with a subscript P. So we can rewrite this path integral into a following form. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, here we can see that if we integrate out hat A, it will uh, localize the path integral to the locus where A1 equals to A2, 
then this path integral is a, exactly the same as the path integral for the theory T mod G with a subscript P. Well and now, oh yeah. <laughs> interrupt several times. Oh yeah, no problem. No. He was probably raised his hand. He may have the question. And the second thing is that, uh, may I make sure first <laughs> between dual symmetry and magnetic symmetry? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they are the same. They are the same. So if, if you claim the symmetry you gauge is an electric symmetry, then dual symmetry is a magnetic symmetry. All right. So then, Subir. Subir, do you want to add something, please? Sorry, that, uh, I should have lowered my hand. No, I don't have a question. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay so, so I'll be there. Now let's make it apparent what we are actually doing. So what we are doing is that we start with a theory. T mod G with a subscript zero after you have T labeled by subscript P. Then we gauge uh, the diagonal dual symmetry hat G. So as a result, we obtained the theory T mod G with a subscript P. So now let me summarize what uh, here. Uh, here, uh, here we know that in order to go from any one of the gauge theory and to, to the original theory, we will have to gauge the dual symmetry. And to go in between two different theories, we will have to couple the theory to a TQFT. Uh, so is there any question at this stage? Okay, so uh, if there's no questions, I'll... Can I just make sure that I understand this procedure? So. Uh, can I understand this last line of you know, tensoring a TQFT and then gauging a, a dual symmetry as I first gauge G in T and then also gauge the G of the SPT and then I just hexing both G to diagonal, or well, hexing G cross G to uh, the same diagonal G action. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay, thank you. Right. So, but describe right. actually following this path the growth from uh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Go, go. May I may I interrupt? The the last step you use the word hixing. I don't think it's hixing. This quotient is gauging. It's not hixing. Yep, oh, yep. it's gauging a dual symmetry, but it, it's the same as hixing a g cross g down to g. And that, that that's my question. Is the same? I thought what he said was that he takes the product, and then whenever he has a quotient, that means gauging that discrete diagonal symmetry we have. Anyway, that's how I interpret it here. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, it's gauging, it's gauging. Yeah, so, so, uh, so uh, another way to say is that green arrow and to obtain a new theory. But that's right here when I uh, write mod G, had G, it means that gauging the symmetry. Okay, so so if there's no questions, I'll I'll proceed. Excuse me, sorry. I want I'm not sure what I want to say, but I think when you try to explain it, it's all five second break. Not sure. Oh, oh. oh sorry. I, I think the internet is terrible. Uh, so yeah, I said. Uh, so another way to think about uh, to go go between two theories is that we first. Uh, recover the theory T, and then we follow the path uh, the, of the green line to obtain a new th theories. So, so this, it is equivalent to going between two, two theories directly. Good. So now we know how to go between any one of the theories to another theories. We can ask what can we uh, say about their global symmetries. So. Uh, this question has partly been answered in the literature. So most of the discussions concerns about only these two theories, where the, uh, we discuss the theory T and the theory just obtained by doing a standard gauging procedure. So uh, I will be focusing on first, I will be first focusing on this, uh, these two theories. And what has been discussed uh, in, the, in the literatures uh, 
uh, is that in principle, the symmetry that we gauge is a subgroup symmetry of a much larger symmetry, gamma. And uh, uh, we can assign it's just a direct product of two symmetries. So G, the other is H. And the simplest case is that G and H has no mixed anomaly. Then after the game, uh, the, the theory will have the dual symmetry hat G and the symmetry H will remain the same. But more interestingly, we can consider the case where G and H has a mixed anomaly. And specifically, we'll consider some anomaly of this type. Then after gauging uh, the, the theory, we'll have, uh, uh, so typically what, what we, one would say is that since this two symmetry has a, a mixed anomaly, so then gauging the symmetry G will break the symmetry H. But uh, the modern way to think of this is that the symmetry after gauging is an extension. So the extension is as follows. A hat G. So one way to describe this extensions is to uh, consider the background gauge field for these two symmetries. So here hat A is the background gauge field for the hat G symmetry and B is the background gauge field for the H symmetry. So uh, it's, this is such that uh, the background gauge field has to set strength. So this relation tells us that if omega B is a co-cycle in general, then HA will not be a co-cycle. It will be a co-chain instead. So this relation uh, describes a high group symmetry which has been discussed uh, extensively in the literature. So here I just listed a few of them. Uh, and let me elaborate a little bit more on uh, how to see this uh, relations be uh, between mixed anomaly and uh, symmetry extensions. So the theory we start with has an atoll phenomenon. And after gauge G, then the a tall phenomenon becomes a gauge uh, uh, the gauge field, background gauge field A is promoted to a dynamical gauge field. And a gauge global anomaly is bad. We have to remove it. Uh, so in order to remove it, we can consider the coupling to background gauge field uh, for the dual symmetry hat G. So this is the coupling. And this coupling can contribute to the bulk, uh, to bulk dependence as follows. So by expanding the terms, we see that we can remove the goal gauge global anomaly if we require the background field satisfied the following constraint. So this is exactly the same constraint we discussed before. So here what we have seen is that start with a mixed anomaly, we can obtain a symmetry extension. And uh, one question one can ask is that what if we start with a symmetry which has a symmetry extension? And at the end, in fact, we'll, we'll obtain a symmetry with a mixed anomaly. So suppose the symmetry we start with is a non-trivial extension of the symmetry. And this means its background gauge field has, uh, has to satisfy the following constraint. Then gauging the symmetry G will, in, will introduce the following coupling to the background for the dual symmetry hat G. And this term uh, also will have a non-trivial bulk dependence. And it, it is because uh, the gauge field A now is not the, by instead a circle chain. So the anomaly is uh, described by this term. So, so as you can see that the anomaly is exactly the same as the anomaly that we start with in, the, in, in this scenario. So let me summarize what uh, what's happens here. Here we see that uh, if we're just doing a standard gauging, then if we start with a symmetry with a symmetry extension, will end symmetry with a mixed anomaly and vice versa. Uh, is there any questions about uh, discussion? Let me add, I wonder whether the symmetry you discussed will be some kind of a emergent symmetry. So what I want to ask you is that, is there some latest scale? Can you do all this procedure on a latest scale? On maybe some latest model in condensed matter. Yeah, I think so. I, I think it uh, it doesn't hurt. Oh, but, but let me mention one thing that here when I say uh, the theory has a dual symmetry. On the on the theory. 
So, so uh, let, let me discuss an example. Let's consider we have a theory obtained by gauging an SPT phases, then we'll obtain the TQFT. And the TQFT has the dual symmetry. By gauging the dual symmetry, then we will obtain the dual symmetry of the dual symmetry. But after gauging the dual symmetry, we just recover a, a, a trivial theory. So that the dual symmetry of the dual symmetry cannot act uh, on, uh, does not act faithfully on. So here, when I discuss the dual symmetry, it's uh, one way to think about it is that we can couple the theory to the corresponding background gauge field, but the dual symmetry may not act faithfully on the theory. Uh, does it answer your question? Oh, let me see. There, there are again some further during your reply, but uh, let me try to guess. I, I think my question, one thing is that possibly one can do this on the maybe field theory partition function setup. And I was wondering, say, whether this procedure you propose has also some uh, latest scale analog. Suppose I give you some latest model some uh, geosymmetry quantum field theory, perhaps uh, couple to another layer of the USPT, and then you try to do some gauging. And however, in order to identify some maybe dual symmetry in the, the gauge theory, or uh, the gauge the version of the theory, is there some subtlety to do this on the latest? Are these, are these doable? I, I cannot see it, so that's basically all I try to ask. Yeah. I don't think there's an obvious obstruction to see this on the lattice. I think the discussion is very general. So, okay. So, so uh, if there's no more questions, uh, then I'll I'll, I'll, I'll discuss uh, questions of this discussion. Excuse me. So, uh, so uh, can I, can I just ask question about the statement that uh, there the dual symmetry doesn't act faithfully on the theory. Mm -hmm. um, if I understand correctly, so if you have a G symmetry, uh, the dual symmetry, the, the dual symmetry is basically the charged object of the dual symmetry are the domain walls of the G symmetry, right? That's right. That's right. Yes. Uh, of course, no. If you don't gauge the, the dual symmetry, uh, if you don't gauge the G symmetry domain walls. They don't really, yeah, I guess they don't really transform faithfully. Um, but these are objects in the series. So. That's, that's right, that's right. So, um, that, that's right. Um, um, yeah, yeah that, that's a way to think about the dual symmetry. Uh, but in general, the, uh, this domain was by not the example. Um, uh, just, just like it does, if we start with the TQFT, obtained by gauging SPT phase, after gauging the dual symmetry, the theory is trivial. So there are no objects to discuss. Force ourselves to consider this domain walls of the symmetries. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, so, now, uh, so now we have to discuss the relations uh, between two theories obtained by uh, standard gauging, then start with a symmetry with a maxonomy or a symmetry with the ex symmetry extensions. What are the consequences? So uh, the answer is that if we start with a symmetry with a maxonomy, we will end up with exactly the same symmetry with symmetry extensions as before. So the discussions before we'll go through, it does not see the so SPT phases that we add to the theory. But more interestingly, if we start with a symmetry which originally has a symmetry extension, then the resulting theory uh, will have a symmetry, to, uh, uh, can have a different symmetries. So in particular, the symmetries might have, uh, after gauging, might involve you know, symmetry extensions. And also the mixed anomalies uh, uh, that's originally uh, obtained by gauging a symmetry extensions. So uh, what is the mechanism behind this uh, additional symmetry G is extends another symmetry for H. Then it will correspondingly modifies the background 
for the symmetry G. And it will affect the SPT phases. Accordingly, it will modify the symmetry after gauging. So it's possible that the symmetry is different uh, at this SPT phases. And now, because uh, the symmetry after gauging uh, has, is involved in symmetry extensions, then the local counter terms that we can add to the theorems it can be more general because of the symmetry extensions. And as a result, some methods might, might be able Okay, so the examples are, uh, 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 instead of discussing uh, uh, abstractly uh, uh, the relations between the theory T and T mod G with a substrate P, I will consider two uh, concrete examples. So in the first case, I'll consider a four-dimensional gauge theory. So uh, for example, we can consider an SUN gauge theory with a, a, a symmetry, uh, with a ZK one-form symmetry. And as another example I would like to consider is a three-dimensional quantum field theory with a ZK zero-form symmetry. Okay, so let's first discuss the first example where we discuss a four-dimensional gauge theory. And uh, here, since we are gauging a ZK one-form symmetry, we have to first understand what are the SPT phases protected by a ZK one-form symmetry. So they can be described by the following uh, Euclidean action. Uh, here, when I write it, it's a uh, write action is schematic. So let me explain what I mean by sch schematic here. So here, uh, if k is odd, then this, this is the correct way to write actions. But when k is even, uh, the correct way to write actions need to use the uh, contracting square operations. And uh, here the coefficient p uh, uh, depends on whether it's k is even or odd. So first of all, p uh, and p plus 2k are equivalent, but we have a constraint that p times k has to be even. So this means that when k is even, there are 2k different choices for p. And when k is odd, there are only k choices of p. So th with this Euclidean actions, uh, if a, is a background gauge field, then the theory describes an SPT phases protected by a ZK one from symmetry. But if A is a dynamical gauge field, then the theory should be thought of as a TQFT and is, it is a ZK two form gauge theory. So now let's consider a case when it is a TQFT. Then we can ask what, what are the symmetry of this TQFT? So when P equals to zero, the theory is very simple. It is a ZK form gauge theory. And equivalently, it can be also thought of as a ZK one form gauge theory. So the theory has two symmetries. So the first symmetry is that it has a ZK one form symmetry. It can couple to a two form background gauge field by, act, uh, by adding to the action the following term. And the theory also has a ZK two form symmetry. Uh, when we turn on its background gauge field, we'll modify it the co-cycle conditions of the dynamical gauge field A. So here C is a in general cycle, a ZK co-cycle. So A now, uh, since uh, because of this relation, A now in general is not a ZK co-cycle, but a ZK co-chain. So these two symmetries has a mixed tsunami. Uh, it comes from the fact that uh, turning on the background uh, C modifies the co-cycle conditions. And hence, these terms will have a non-trivial bulk dependence. So we can ask how is the symmetry deformed when a P is non-zero? So uh, to, to study this, we have to ask what is the bulk dependence of the actions. So if we compute about a bulk, bulk dependence, it involves two terms. So the red terms, uh, in the red terms here, we see that it's involves uh, a dynamical gauge field small a. So it, is, uh, it can be interpreted as a gauge global anomaly. So we have to remove this gauge global anomaly. And this means that the background gauge field has to satisfy the following constraints. This constraints means that if C is, is a, C here is in general a, a ZK three form uh, co-cycle and head A now is modified to a ZK two form uh, co-chain. So, 
and and now uh, in in the bulk dependence, there's also another terms, the blue terms. So the blue terms only depends on the background gauge field, and uh, it's later becomes the atoll phenomenon of the global symmetries. So this is the atoll phenomenon of the theory. But what's interesting about this atoll phenomenon is that uh, because of the symmetry extensions, then this atoll phenomenon sometimes can be completely removed. So we have the k of k and p equals to one. So when GCD of k and p equals to one, uh, p will have an inverse the dk field. Let's denote the inverse by r. Then uh, we can add to the actions the following uh, uh, counter term uh, and exactly, which is exactly the same as the atoll phenomenon. So this means the atoll phenomenon can be removed by adding local counter terms. So uh, this uh, this phenomenon uh, is uh, can be thought of as the atoll phenomenon being truncated by the symmetry extensions. And if we ask what is the order of the anomaly, namely how many times uh, of this anomaly, uh, how, if we multiply this anomaly by multiple times, uh, uh, when can it be made trivial? And this, uh, this, ha uh, this happens, uh, this happens that uh, the symmetry, uh, sorry, the order of the anomaly goes from ZK to ZGCD of KP. So it's reduced from ZK to G GCD of uh, KP. So this is a phenomenon of truncated uh, atoll phenomenon. So let me summarize uh, what, we, what we know about the four form uh, ZK two form gauge theory. We know that it's Euclidean actions is given by the following forms. And uh, there are two K different such theories when K is even, and there are K different such theories when K is odd. And the theory can be coupled to a ZK two form and a three form background gauge field, with a, given that they satisfy the following constraints. And the theory also has a truncated atoll phenomenon. And when I say it's a truncated atoll phenomenon, it means that the atoll phenomenon can be made trivial when GCD equals to one. So let's consider a concrete example. Uh, so as an example, let's consider the theory where uh, T is Z and one from symmetry. We'll assume that it's subgroup symmetry, uh, that uh, ZK is its subgroup, or it's a subgroup of Z and. Then gauging the ZK symmetry means that uh, the, the, uh, it will modify the, the global structure of the gauge group. Uh, it will reduce uh, the gauge group from SUN to SUN mod ZK. And this theory has, uh, two, uh, has discrete theta angles uh, that come from uh, the different choices of P's. And uh, there, are, uh, there are K different choices when K is odd and two K different choices when K is even. And uh, theories with different discrete angles in this case uh, have this exactly the same set of local operators, but the line operators be different. So how, how can we label the line operators in uh, SUN mod ZK gauge theory? So it can be labeled by their electric and magnetic charges. So uh, the theory with discrete theta angle P First of all, has a Wilson line of electric charge K, and it also has an atoll line with magnetic charge and small K, but the electric charge uh, depends on the discrete theta angles. So uh, here we see that uh, P, uh, when K is odd, then there are K distinct theories, because when P equals to zero, uh, when P equals to K, we can add to this atoll line and the following Wilson line such that it becomes zero. So, so there are indeed K different uh, theories um, labeled by discrete theta ang angle P. But when K is even, it's uh, a bit more subtle because uh, the theory with P equals to K and the theory with P equals to zero has exactly the same uh, set of, of flying operator spectrum. The only difference is that the spin flying, uh, uh, can be different. So in one case, the total flying is bosonic in, a, in another case, the atoll flying is fermionic. So the, 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 uh, the form a charge lattice, uh, which is of the following type. Uh, it depends on the GCD of K 
n mod k n over k and p. And now let's discuss what's the global symmetry of the theory. So we know that uh, the theory we start with is SUN gauge theory. It has a Z and one form symmetry. So Z and one form symmetry can be thought of as an extension of a Z n mod k symmetry by a ZK symmetry. So such extensions uh, uh, means that the corresponding background gauge field has to satisfy certain constraints. So here, A is the background gauge field for the, uh, for the ZK symmetry, and B is the background gauge field for the ZN mod K symmetry. And here, here bulk uh, um, of B means uh, uh, represents a Bolkenstein homomorphism associated to these extensions. So the, oh, this relation looks very familiar because we can compare it with the Z. The, the relations where we turn on a background, a three form background gauge field for the ZK two form symmetry. And this means that we can have a three form background gauge field for the ZK two form symmetry with the Bolkenstein homomorphism of B. Then we can simply compute the symmetry and atoll phenomena of uh, the theory SUM mod ZK by substituting this relation back to what we know about the ZK two form gauge theory. So uh, uh, if we substitute it back, we find that the background gauge field will abide okay, the following constraint. And uh, because of this constraint, uh, then the atoll phenomena will also be a truncated atoll phenomena, which vanishes when GCDKP equals to one. So uh, what, what does this constraint mean? So it means that uh, the symmetry is a non-trivial extensions um, of the, the ZK symmetry. And this non-trivial extension is specified by the discrete theta angle of P. So as a result, this is uh, the global symmetries. So if we recall, this global symmetry is exactly the same as the, the charge lattice. So here we see that we can reproduce the global symmetry of the Z, SUM mod ZK gauge theory by uh, studying its background gauge transformation, uh, by studying its background gauge field. So now, if we understand the global symmetry of the theory, and it's a total phenomenon, we can use it to constrain dynamics. So there are two possible applications. So first one, we can use it to constrain infrared dynamics. So in order to match a nominee, the low energy theory cannot be trivially gap, except when GCD KP goes to one. So in that case, we know that a total phenomenon removed by this. It is consistent with the proposal that SUK is a non-trivial TQRT uh, based on the uh, ZGCDKP group. And another application to check S dualities uh, for n close to four super Yamius theory. So as an example, we can consider these two theories. Uh, these two th uh, theories, they are due to each other by S dualities. And we find that they have the same global symmetry, Z4, and the atoll phenomenon vanishes on both sides. But the vanishing of atoll phenomena are different, uh, has different reasons on both sides. So on the left-hand side, since we are gauging the full Z4 symmetries, then there are no remaining electric symmetry that the magnetic symmetry can have mixed anomaly with. So on the left-hand side, the anomaly is trivial. But on the right-hand side, the anomaly is trivial precisely because of the reason that GCD KP equals to one. So here we can see that S duality is consistent with our, our analysis of symmetry. And now, uh, uh, so, so here we have seen that uh, the phenomenon of symmetry extensions and also the truncated atoll phenomenon. So what, what is the general idea behind all of this? So the general idea is that, uh, so abstractly, we can start with a four-dimensional theory denoted by T with all symmetry gamma. And uh, we'll consider the case where the ZK one form symmetry is a subgroup symmetry of gamma. And we assume that gamma is a non-trivial extension uh, of a symmetry H by the ZK one form symmetry. 
So that extension is described by this relations of the background gauge field. Engaging the ZK1 form symmetry uh, with an additional SPD phase will lead to different theories labeled by the subscript uh, uh, P. And uh, after gauging the symmetries, we can couple the gauge theory to the dual ZK1 form symmetry. So in this case, the dual ZK1 form symmetry is the magnetic ZK1 form symmetry by transient terms. And the theory also have a symmetry H. And if we compare Compare this relations uh, with the relations, uh, we, we Im immediately see that we can identify the three form background uh, gauge field for the ZK two form gauge theory with omega of B. Then, as before, we can substitute this relation back and, uh, and, uh, and uh, obtain uh, and compute the symmetries of the theory with uh, the square theta angle P and, uh, and compute this atoll phenomenon. So, here we see that. Uh, if we start with a symmetry with a symmetry, end up also with a symmetry with symmetry extensions. And the symmetry extension is controlled by the discrete theta angle P. And again, the total phenomenon is truncated precisely because of the symmetry extension. So here, the total phenomenon vanishes when, whenever GCD KP equals to one. So with this discussions, we can now add matters to the SUN gauge theory and made, made it into SUN QCD. So the, uh, we can add uh, an NF degenerate bosons or fermions with certain SUN representations R. And we will assume that uh, the SUN representations have an, an analogy R, a small R. So uh, because adding uh, matters, uh, that trans, uh, because adding the matters, then it uh, might have a smaller one form symmetry. So the remaining one form symmetry is a ZK one form symmetry, uh, where K is a GCD on R. And other than the one form symmetry, the theory of zero form flavor symmetry, which acts on the matter fields. So here, uh, the symmetry, uh, first of all, is a UNF symmetry. But we have to mod this UNF symmetry by a, a Z and mod K. So this modding is, uh, of Z and mod K comes from the fact that part of the, uh, the of global symmetry transformations is equivalent to the gate transformations. So that means that the matter fields, in fact, transformed under these symmetries, where UNF is uh, is uh, is the global symmetry, and SUN is a gate symmetry. So uh, uh, the symmetry that uh, shared by the gate symmetry and the global symmetry is a Z and mod K symmetry. But this Z and mod K is, uh, is extended by ZK to full Z and within the center of SUN. So this extension uh, requires the background gauge field to satisfy the following constraint, where A is a background uh, gauge field for the ZK one form symmetry. And B is the background gauge field for zero form symmetry. And this uh, W, and so this Bokken uh, is the same as the Bokken Stein homomorphism before, and it is associated to this extensions. Here, W2 is the Brouwer class of, of uh, this bundles, which abstracts its lifting from uh, UNF mod, uh, mod ZNK to UNF. So, uh, so here we see that uh, the background gauge field satisfied this constraint, and this represents a two group between a zero form symmetry and a one form symmetry. And if we know that a theory has a two group symmetry, it can have non-trivial dynamical consequences. So for example, in, in this theory, if we assume that the one form symmetry is unbroken in the infrared, so that mean, means that there are confining strings charged under the symmetries. And we have it, the Walsh's theory of these confining strings. And because of the two groups, the confining strings will carry a not trivial atoll phenomenon given by the bulk instance of, uh, of the broader class of uh, the symmetry B, uh, the symmetry, and zero form symmetry. So this discussion is, uh, is very much similar to the discussions uh, in this paper where they discuss uh, 
the constraints of uh, uh, two-group symmetries on uh, strings, uh, string-like uh, uh, strings, and or solid, solid, solitonic strings or confining strings. So as before, we can get symmetry and obtain an SUN mod ZK gauge theory that couples to the matter. And the theory will have also have a two-group symmetry and so on. Uh, um, the sim oh, oh, sorry, is there any question? Uh, yes, I have one. Sorry, there's again some break of I'm trying to appreciate more. Uh, maybe just some simple things first. Previous slide. Mm -hmm. Sorry, a previous one. Oh, oh, this one? A previous slide. <coughs> SUN QCD. Yes, just make sure. Uh, when we have considered S1 was thermal in S1 representation R. Um, just make sure when this own reality R is fundamental, you will be known as R as uh, N as well, so if it's fundamental. Oh, so, so you're asking that if the representation is fundamental, what is the uh, one form symmetry? Just make sure I get it. Yeah. So, because so, so yes. Yeah. So, if R is fundamental, the one uh, k is equals to one. So, the one form symmetry is trivial. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay, good. Okay, good, good. Okay. And, yeah. uh, is there any other question? And the, the meta field transform is as you, the, there's a UMF flavor implies by, and there's also a SUM part. You, you are including also the gauge part, right? Internal gauge. Yeah, part. that's right. So, so here the UNF is the global part, and the S uh, is symmetry, and, and SUN is the gauge symmetry. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, so here, um, yeah. So, is there any other questions or? Okay. So now, um, let me do another example. Uh, since we discussed spends a lot of time before, I will be very brief in this case. So here we can consider a three dimensional and to gauge a zk zero form symmetry. And as before, we have to understand what are the symmetry protect, uh, what are protected by ZK zero symmetry. The discussions into two parts. One case we can consider just the bosonic SPD phases. Then the bosonic SPD phases protected by ZK symmetry is classified, classified by the a cohomology, a group cohomology. So there are uh, K different such uh, bosonic uh, SPD phases. And all of them can be described um, uh, continuous uh, U1 times U1 theory. Uh, uh, so, this, so one way to understand these actions is as follows. ZK or ZK gauge field. Then uh, this will just be the actions for K gauge theory. So in this theory, uh, uh, there are several kind of line operators. So one type is one 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 type is the electric lines, which are uh, which are of this type, and also the mag magnetic line of this type. And these two lines obey the following relations. And we can uh, we can count, uh, and we know that a line a uh, topological line operators in three dimensions will generate uh, one form symmetry. So we can couple the symmetry generated by these two uh, lines to a background gauge field. So the coupling is as follows, where we act to the actions, the following terms. So now uh, let's suppose we integrate out C, uh, the dynamical gauge field C. Then this will forces uh, dA to be the same, same as big C. And so in general, if big C is a co-cycle, then small a will be modified to be a ZN co-chain. Okay, so what, what are the symmetry? Two ZK symmetry. 
uh, one of them is gener generated by U, the other of them is gener generated by V. And so uh, this tool symmetry has a mixed uh, autophenomy. So this mixed autophenomy can be un understood as follows. This two uh, uh, lines, they have a non-trivial braiding with each other. And this non-trivial braiding means that if we gauge one symmetry, the other symmetry has to be broken. So the, the autophenomy is, is represented uh, by these terms. And, and uh, how is the symmetry modified when P is not equal to zero? So it can be understood by, uh, by looking at the relations of these two lines. So, so the relation, so these two lines obey this, this uh, algebra, which means that uh, the, the background gauge fields obeys a certain constraints. And these constraints can be described by by these relations, and uh, practically speaking, this uh, uh, background gauge field means that the one-form symmetry is a non-trivial extensions of a zk by another zk group. Then non-trivial extensions is specified by p, and as a result, the one-form symmetry is of the following type, which depends on GCD of kp. And we can also compute the symmetry, uh, the autonomy of the symmetries. It's, it can be inferred from the braiding and the spins of this uh, operators, of this line operators. So as a result, this is the autonomy. So now as before, we can consider a general uh, three-dimensional theory with certain zero form of symmetry gamma. We'll consider the case where ZK is a subgroup of gamma. And in particular, uh, it's a non-trivial extension of a symmetry H by the ZK symmetry. And this extension is specified uh, by uh, uh, an element in this cohomology from H to ZK. So this means that the corresponding background gauge field satisfies this constraint, where A is a, is a background gauge field for the ZK symmetry and B is the background gauge field for the H symmetry. And now we can gauge the ZK symmetry by, uh, with an additional uh, transcendence level. And as a result, it will lead to different theories uh, labeled by discrete IP. And the gauge theory uh, has a dual ZK one form symmetry because of the gauging. And it couples uh, as follows where we act to the actions the following terms. And the theory also has a, a H symmetry as before. And if we compare these relations with the relations we known before, uh, sorry, the relation uh, with the relation we known before, uh, this relation, then we see that we can identify it, the uh, two form background gauge field for the ZK one form omega of B. Then as before, since we understand what happens in this ZK, uh, bosonic ZK, then we can substitute this relation back to these two relations and compute the symmetry and the corresponding autophenomy. So as before, we see that if we start with the symmetry with a non-trivial symmetry extension, we'll also obtain the symmetry with a non-trivial symmetry extensions. And the extension is specified by the discrete theta angle P. And uh, the symmetry has an autophenomy of this type. The symmetry is also truncated in the sense that because we now have symmetry extension, so we can act to the boundary uh, more general uh, terms, and that can, in principle, reduce the autophenomy. But in this case, it is unlike what we discussed before. This autophenomy cannot be completely removed by local, local counter terms. So now, uh, after we discuss bosonic uh, 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 SPT phases, we can consider a screen we act a fer uh, at a ferm fermionic SPT phase. So, uh, so I will be just considering a Z2 for fermionic SPT phases. So uh, in this case, uh, the SPT phases are classified by a uh, give us a Z8 classifications. And how, how is the theory, uh, how is the bosonic SPT 
we know that there are in, in a, when the symmetry is Z2, there are only two bosonic theories and they are lab labeled by P equals to zero and P equals to two. And they are mapped to the fermionic theory labeled by L with L equals N. Now we can promote uh, uh, this SPD phases to a to uh, TQL phase by gauging the symmetry. When L equals to zero more four or two more four, uh, it, it is, uh, sorry, when L equals to zero more four, the theory is just the same as the bosonic theory. So the theory has four lines. They obey a Z2 times Z2 fusion rule. But when L equals to two more four, the theory is fermionic. And so, uh, the theory, uh, again, has four topological lines, fusion rule. And uh, when S three only topological lines, denoted by one epsilon sigma. And uh, these three lines uh, obey an icing fusion rule. And in particular, epsilon, uh, is, uh, we can see it has, uh, when it fused with itself, it gives us uh, uh, identity. So this means that epsilon generates a Z to one form symmetry. And the, sim uh, and the lines charged under this Z uh, one form symmetry are sigmas. So now we can uh, we can uh, we can gauge we can gauge the gauge symmetry with this additional uh, fermionic SPT phases, and we can ask how are different theories related. So different theories are related by adding to uh, the theories the TQFTs that we discussed here, and then gauge the uh, Z two one form symmetry, uh, the Z two dual one form symmetry. And this uh, Z2, uh, Z2 one form symmetry, uh, first of all, generated by the dual And let's assume that uh, the, the theory uh, uh, obtained from standard gauging has another Z2 one form symmetry. And it is generated by tau. Uh, and we assume that tau has a mixed anomaly with the dual Z21 form symmetry. Then, after gauging the diagonal uh, dual Z21 form symmetry, this tau is not gauging variant. So, it has to be combined with another lines which are not gauging variant. So, in, in, this, uh, in this case, it will combine with sigmas and to form. Uh, uh, new uh, lines denoted by sigma tilde. And now in this theories, uh, uh, there are line operators denoted by sigma tilde and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and epsilon. And these two, uh, two, two lines were formed uh, uh, well, it is the same as before. Oh, where the, the two lines, uh, where the four lines obey a Z2 times Z2 fusion rule. Well, when L equals to two more four, the theory uh, will have a Z4 one form symmetry. And what, what's more interesting is when L equals to one. In this case, lines do not form a, a group. Instead, they form a fusion category known as the Tambora Yamagami category. So it is essentially the same as uh, a category, a fusion category describing the icing fusion rule. So here we see that um, by adding to a theory and an S, uh, a fermionic SPT phases, we can end up with some non invertible topological lines. So, uh, is there any questions at this stage? Okay, so um, if not, I will conclude. So, um, so let me conclude. So uh, what's, uh, what we have discussed is that or when we gauge the global symmetry, we can often have the freedom to insert an SPT phases of the global symmetry. And as a result, uh, uh, choosing different uh, SPT phases will obtain different theories labeled by discrete, uh, different discrete theta angles. And we discussed the uh, relations Series with different theta angles by coupling the series to TQFTs. And also, we'll discuss a phenomenon that uh, 
when we gauge a symmetry uh, that extends another symmetry, the dual symmetry will also participate in the symmetry extensions. And the symmetry extensions is controlled by what SPT phase we insert uh, before doing the gauging. And because of the symmetry extensions, uh, uh, the theory, uh, the new theory uh, might have a truncated atoll phenomenon, which might vanishes uh, for some species. Okay. So, so that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening and stay healthy. Thank you. Hold on. One more lecture. Actually, there is an audience making a good job. So there are some discrete voice, but the topic is also discrete, so it's match very well together. Any question from the audience? Please feel free. Uh, I have a question. So in the case of two plus one D theory, and you gauge a Z2 one form symmetry, you uh, run into a certain non-invertible line. Um, yep. I wonder if you can, is there a mathematical, mathematically precise way to think about the emergence of these non-invertible lines as some kind of symmetry extension? Oh, that's a good question. Um, um, I, I don't know in this case. Um, yeah, I don't know uh, how to do this in this case. So, so, so for example, uh, when we describe uh, symmetry extensions, we usually discuss uh, uh, how the background gauge fields are um, extended or all uh, relations between the background gauge fields. But if we have a non-invertible non topological lines, um, I'm not sure how can we couple it to a uh, background gauge field in general. Yeah, okay, I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe related question. I think, is there some criteria you can predetermine that you will get in under what procedure you will get a non invertible logical lines or non invertible defects? Can you tell based on some, maybe some criteria or consistency condition? Mm, yeah, um, that's also a good question. I, I think maybe the zero, zero other question is that uh, what are the possible topological lines? So, so here we know that in 3, 3D TQFDs, there are non-invertible non topological lines because the series of TQFDs described by uh, uh, unitary modular tensor category. And in 2Ds, uh, we might, uh, we might uh, non-invertible topological lines um, as well. But um, I think in general, the understanding of non-invertible topological lines are very limited. So, so I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, whether we can have a criterion uh, to, to see whether we always, uh, we can end up with a non-invertible line or not. So here, here is just an example. It would be nice to have a uh, framework that tells us whether the symmetry is invertible or non-invertible after gauging. Yeah, I try to maybe just widely speculate. Totally don't know. Is there some, for example, when the one point symmetry usually we know one point symmetry absolutely need to be abelian, but the Maybe there are some consistent conditions and say that there are some non-abelian. And uh, because of that, maybe we need to go beyond the usual in the invertible lines. I don't know whether you know how it's all non-abelian, so require is there some kind of yeah. See. Yes, but, but in this case is uh, the uh, I, I, in this case, the sim it's not, I, I wouldn't say the symmetry is not abelian. It, it's just, um, it is non-invertible topological lines. So it's described by a category. So it's not described by, by a non-abelian group, by a category. Um, but, but you're right that, uh, what, uh, that a one-form symmetry has to be abelian always.
near I mean that maybe there's some uh I don't know exactly. It would be really nice to go through this slides even more in details. I think it will help people to understand. Also, especially me. Uh, let me see. Do you mind? I just go through this slide more carefully again and then just say how do you determine all this? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So so um also so maybe what just to end, just to say some general words. So if we want to make some progress about non-invertible lines, maybe a good place to study is, uh, is just like what we did here to consider 3D uh, TQFDs. So we have better controls on the possible topological lines. So, so let me just uh, explain a little bit more uh, on the slides, about the slides. So, um, so the theory we start with is uh, T, mod, uh, T mod Z2, uh, which is substrate zero. And, uh, and we assume that the theory has another Z21 from C and uh, generated by gamma. And when I say the symmetry has a mixed anomaly with a dual symmetry, it means that they have non-trivial braidings. And since it's a Z21 from symmetry, so the non-trivial braiding means that uh, this line carries charge one under the dual symmetry. So uh, uh, as, as we're discussing in, in these procedures, we have to gauge a diagonal dual of uh, one form symmetries. So that means that to, for, we have to remove uh, gauge non invariant lines and keep gauge invariant lines. And also, we need to do some ident identifications uh, and so on and so forth. But the important thing is that we need to remove uh, gauge non invariant lines and keep uh, gauge invariant lines. So here we know that gamma, uh, sorry, uh, we know that tau uh, is charged under the one form symmetries. So tau is. Skin, uh, after gauging, tau is uh, not gauging variant, so tau has to, to be removed. And similarly, sigma from the Z2L has to be removed. But what's fortunate is that tau has charge one under the diagonal dual Z21 from symmetry, so they can be combined into a gauging variant lines. And, uh, and uh, what's nice about this gauging variant lines is that uh, we we'll go to the, fusion to, to the fusion rules. So as before, uh, for example, in this case, uh, uh, in this case, uh, for example, in this case, we know that uh, sigma, uh, uh, if we multiply sigma with another sigma, uh, it will give us uh, identity in epsilon. But now if we add to sigma uh, uh, Z2 lines tau, this fusion rule is not modified. It. Uh, except that now sigma becomes sigma tilde, and since two tau's when they fuse to each other gives identity, so this rule is mo not modified. It. And similarly, uh, this rule is also not modified. It. So that's why we can obtain a uh, non-trivial uh, uh, fusion category. So in general, if, if this symmetry that uh, we, we consider is not a Z2 symmetry, but some other symmetries, for example, a ZK symmetry, then and uh, we cannot say anything about it, except that when so, so is there any other question? The last five or 10 seconds, maybe the last break, the voice break again. Oh, okay. Um, yes, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, so let me just say again that, uh, so it's crucial that uh, the symmetry that we discussed here is a Z2 symmetry. Uh, uh, because it's a Z2 symmetry, then tau, uh, when tau fuse with another tau, it will just give us identity. So this will not modify the fusion rules. Um, and if the symmetry is not Z2, but rather some ZK symmetry, then then we cannot uh, construct a, a fusion categories in this case, um, except that we can choose a Z2 subgroup uh, and use it to construct the, the fusion category. So uh, is there any other question? Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Hi, this is Ant. Nice talk. So, uh, the type of two phenomena that you consider, 
was uh, I guess was the particular type that was linear, right? Oh, that's yes, yes. That, that's so a good. Do you have like a comment for more general tooth anomalies? Maybe there could be a possible source of non-invertible symmetries when you gauge them. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's a good point. So, uh, so, so let me uh, and what Sahan. Using a separate symmetry, then near in the background gauge field of the symmetry that we. Need. But what Sahan was saying is that there might be some other possibility. For example, we can consider the case where uh, there is quadratic in A, or some other possibilities. Then in that case, after gauging, in general, uh, the, the in general uh, the theory, sorry the the symmetry will not be described by uh, ordinary symmetry. And is that it might not be described by a higher group symmetry, but rather it's described by some groups. So, so that's one source uh, of, uh, one way to generate uh, uh, non-invertible symmetries. But, but I think the discussion there is, uh, the discussion about this, uh, uh, this way to generate non-invertible symmetry is not um, very well understood. So some of the discussions uh, occurs in, appears in this uh, paper by Tachikawa. So is there any other question? Am I correct? Uh... Xiaogang, some question comments? Because your, your microphone is on, so I suppose Professor will, will want to say something. I think uh, Xiaogang said that uh, his microphone doesn't work, but, but do, you, do you have a question? Maybe you can type and I can ask for you. Maybe Xiaogang want to make a comment, but his microphone doesn't work. I don't know why. It's weird, weird recently, there are many technical situations very strange. <laughs> well, Audience, please feel free. I think this talk is very nice, but a bit technical. But people should feel free to ask. And then, for example, if some slides are not clear or not, uh, you want to hear again, I think it's a good time to ask. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the talk is a bit technical. Actually, I have a question about this slide. Um, mm -hmm. did, did, do you assume that this extension is central? Or is it uh, the general extension? So right. So this is a. So first of all, uh, here uh, G, the symmetry G and H can, in principle, describe some different um, different. Um, sorry, can in principle describe different um, uh, symmetries of different degrees. So in that case, uh, the extensions is not just a group extensions. It is really uh, a high group. So, but in a specific case, G and H have 10 degrees. And the extension is, uh, uh, is uh, then the extension is, is central, I think. Oh, yeah. The, the, the extension is central, yeah. So it is, doesn't include the case where H can act on G. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because but, the, but, but, the, uh, the bottom equation you wrote down seems to assume it's central, is that right? That's right. Uh -huh. but, but, but let me mention that in general, high groups, we allowed H to X on G. So that, that's the most general case. Oh, sorry, let me, let, yeah, we are, we are H on G. But here, we, we don't obtain that. Uh -huh. So what do you have to modify here, if, if you want to do that? has a number of uh, actions on G, then that means that this delta uh, will not be uh, ordinary co-boundaries. It will be modified 
at it. Uh, it will be a twisted boundary, which includes the actions. Okay, that's the only thing you have to change is just. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly. right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and let me mention that uh, the most general two-group symmetry uses two data. So one data is, as you mentioned, uh, about how H acts on G. And uh, the date, second data is about how uh, H extends G. So, so this, this describes the second data. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe let me add something. I, I think I'm also speculating in the general way. I'm not sure whether it makes sense, but it, maybe you can make a comment. Hold on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think for people who study SPT, you we try to have some maybe different layers of hierarchy of construction. For example, start from complex fermion. Maybe you know if you are familiar with uh, Guwen construction or some uh, super good homology construction, there is also several layers of. Uh, generators from different cohomology group. I'm trying to say the following. I'm trying to figure out, is there some certain layers that uh, perhaps that play some key role for the, uh, you know, bring up this non-invertible objects. So is it possible perhaps maybe you require beyond super good cohomology, you know, maybe Maybe some Marana data bring up the non-invertible non, non objects. Is that, uh, that's basically what I tried to ask many, maybe, maybe several minutes ago. Is there some kind of a uh, data that- uh, Are you asking? Um, for, for example, I, 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 that, that generator is minimum maybe evolving some Marana, then that's the reason why there is some non-invertible objects, basically. Or is there some something also, you know, maybe mixed with the way you gauge higher symmetry? I was trying to get the, maybe which part of is the essence to get non-invertible objects. If that's, a, if that's just because maybe some runan is coming up, for example, it could be some layers of, a, you know, you, you know, there are some kind of a different Exact sequence that uh, you you solve some consistent condition on some of them give you some layers of SPT class. For example, the Z egg class you give basically you include one, which is R class, right? And those R class basically when you gauge uh, the Z two symmetry, the the zero form symmetry, it will become non abelian right? So I'm just trying to say that is that the non-invertible lines has the same origin as that uh, kind of. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think I probably cannot answer this question. But uh, but let me mention that I uh, there there are some papers by uh, Zongran and Ifan on uh, discuss about uh, the, uh, how to describe a tau phenomenon of non-invertible lines. Uh, but not, I'm not very familiar with the work, so um, I can't say too much. Hello? Yes, you, uh, we can hear yeah, you. I <laughs> now I think my mic works using another computer. So I have a very simple question for, the, for your last slide. So what is the topological line? Uh, what is this line? Uh, if that's a line, is in a space-time line or in a space line? So, oh, space-time line. Space -time it's a space, so that's correspond to some kind of word, quasi particle, some word line. That's right, yes. So, therefore, the, the fusion rule you described below is a kind of like a, just a fusion rule of a particle, not the fusion rule of a line, but in your yeah. sense. Fusion rule for onions, particle like onions. That's right, that's what I the fusion rule of. This line. So I think you have lines as a line-like excitations, right? So, so that's that's my question. When you say topological line, do you mean the line-like excitation in space, or word line, which is a particle-like excitation? So that's a okay. different thing. I'm always referred to the second case. So it's just line in space time, time dimensions.
Okay, I think your audio kind of kind of on and off. And uh, so, so, so it's clear that uh, this topology line is a line in space time. So therefore, this sigma epsilon is a particle like excitation in space. Yes. And, uh, uh, yes, then, yes. and then there is a question about uh, those particle like excitation in space, in two dimensional space, I guess. I think here you're thinking of two plus one D. Uh, so are those uh, particle like station a uh, charge object of this uh, symmetry? Or is it different? Uh, they, they are the charge objects of the symmetries. I see. So because, yeah. uh, so because charge object is a point like, so the symmetry you're talking about is a, it's a zero symmetry, right? Because a charge object is a point like. So you have a non-invertible zero symmetry. Uh, no, no, that, that's not the right way to say yeah, this. So, so, that, so that's, that, that, that's part I can confuse, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, so, yeah, so when you talk about extensions, we have, so for example, we can think about toracles. So the excitations on toracles, they're extremely heavy and uh, energy costly particles. So, so for example, uh, if we, so we know that this anions, they are attached with some lines and the lines that it's attached with, when it's form a closed loop, it becomes a, becomes a line operators. So I'm, I'm discussing this line. Okay. So, uh, okay, so, so let's go back again. So here, uh, uh, yeah, this part. So here you consider a one form symmetry some kind of one symmetry, right? So yes. their, their symmetry generator uh, line like operator in space. That's right, that's right. And, okay. it, yeah. and then, then here you'll say that uh, the end point of this line like operator create uh, onions and uh, that's uh, the fusion you write down before is this end point of a line operator. Is Correspond to right. and the point of those line operator. That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that in, in okay. TQFT, the, yeah. So there, there are, it's it's not like QCD where we have confinement where one function symmetry are not broken. So in yeah. this, case, no charged strings. So what what you yeah. about the charged strings that can uh, occurs in QCD where the symmetry are not broken. But in yeah. this broken. Yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, th this is, yeah, this is uh, what uh, I think this may be right understanding is that, uh, so in two, two plus one dimensional uh, TQFT, whenever you have a non-abelian onions, so those non-abelian onions can be created at the end of a line operator, some kind of like a Wilson line operator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those Wilson line operator basically generally is a uh, non-invertible uh, symmetry, non-invertible one symmetry in this case. Uh, yeah, this is non-invertible one symmetry. Yeah. And uh, so, so this, uh, this phenomena can appear in any uh, non-abelian uh, discrete gauge theory. You know, this uh, Wilson line operator would, would, would uh, do something like that. So here, presumably, uh, the two plus one dimensional theory is, uh, is, uh, is some kind of uh, icing topology order which contain non-abelian onion, sigma, and the line operator whose end point is a sigma. This line operator can be viewed as a generator of a one symmetry and this one symmetry is non-invertible. I think that's a make, make, uh, yeah. make correspond to something like that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, sorry. I'm confused by something. Just what I'm confused is that whether I uh, appreciate enough or not appreciate enough about this slide you showed, because we all know, most of people I think in the audience now know the, the, this, uh, at least the Z2 gauge theory with a level L, right? The ZA class level there, right? L is 0, 1, 2, 2, 7, 8, right? Those R class. One two five seven. That is, 
which you denote L as one mod two, those has a gauge theory which is non-abelian. So we all know this. But but uh, other than that, what's the one ingredient you try to say about about the? Uh, I, I think, uh, we know we all know they are non-abelian and TQFT variant. We all know they have a fusion rule of the uh, anion that, that you written down, and we all know there is some yeah. kind of line operator for them. But what's the things that uh, you try to emphasize? Yeah. So 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 let me. Yeah, I think they are so it's, uh, all in this hierarchies. First one is that uh, what are nine of my sin 3Ds? So one one would say that if we have a non abundant uh, TQFDs, then then we do have nine red lines, the anions, and then so, uh, as a look at and form some fusion category, which can be thought of as a nine vertical lines. That I agree. So this is. In that sense, it's a discussion. Then discussing here. You're right that the Z two L uh, is is uh, is uh, has some nine vertical lines. And, uh, the question is that whether these lines might survive after doing this gauging. In general, these lines may not survive, and and, and maybe it will bind with lines and then. To form other kind of fusion categories. That's what uh, I understand is if the theory T mod Z with a subscript zero has a specific Z2 one from some trees with specific it has a have a uh, sub subcategory which is described by this uh, icing uh, categories. So it's really based on I, I have a Z2 symmetry with certain anomaly. It's not just that uh, we have L symmetry. Uh, uh, I, I think so. I mean, maybe 50% of the time, or maybe 60% of the time, when you try to reply, the voice all break up. But I think I get what you say. Thanks. I think. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's really okay. yeah. Well, any more questions? Well, in any case, uh, maybe let's thank uh, Hoda again for the wonderful uh, seminar and uh, we thank you first, and then if people want to ask more, and can stay. Thank you.